Hey everybody, this is Jim at uh, sp500chart.com. It's <clears throat> Sunday afternoon about 4.30 on the 1st of June 2014. We're going to take a look uh, back at the past week and also what happened on Friday in the S&P. Maybe we'll take a look at another chart or two as well. Before we do, I just want to remind you that the website and this video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site when the video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I am not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's uh, take a look at the S&P. Starting out here with a 30-minute chart. Um, of course, this was a, uh, uh, a, a short week. We uh, missed Monday's trading uh, d due to the holiday. And everything that we saw this week was really a nice breakout above a, a resistance line that I think is quite significant. Um, this line, we've moved this around a little bit for a while. I think we just called it 1900. But then we had this, uh, this high put in here intraday, just a little over 1900 before a significant sell off. That coupled with the large sell off, or relatively large sell off, we had the last time we got close to 1900 back in uh, the first week of April. Those two things told me that this and this are that these two points right here are important. So, with that in mind, I started to look at this as a potential inverted head and shoulders pattern. And with the idea that if we get technically significantly above this neckline, then we should be off to the races. Previously, I'd, I'd said that if we have a close, that's a good healthy amount over 1900 that that we would be that we would start a new leg up well um we did get that as a matter of fact the entire week we were over 1900 we we never came back down actually we gapped over 1905 and never came back to 1905 if you don't mind, I'm going to remove these moving averages. Um, so if we look at what happened during the week, um, you could say it was a great week. Now, I'll be honest with you, where we were on, on Friday before I did the last weekend video, nobody can, can I don't think, nobody has any, has any justification to say necessarily that Monday we're going to break out over that line. All we could say is, hopefully we will, because we were we were coming up to it again. So the whole thing about getting the breakout, actually on Tuesday, I, I misspoke, Monday was the day off. Uh, the whole thing about getting the breakout on Tuesday was really not, not anything due to in, anything in the chart, as much as it was just, frankly, good fortune. It happened on Tuesday. So now I think we should definitely be looking at this uh, purple trend line as support. At whatever point, whenever it may occur, that we come down to test this area. Uh, high, ch high likelihood we will do that at some point. Will it happen this week? It could. Would it happen on Monday, tomorrow? It could. Would it would it ever happen? Could it could it happen three months from now? That's possible too. Again, when we when we establish these lines on the chart and when the data supports them, you you don't know necessarily when something will happen. All you do is you say going forward. This now should be support. So if we gap down on Monday, 18 points, and we come down to 1905, then I would say we should rebound from there. Uh, so they, they, I, I'm just saying that the timing of things, that's a totally separate issue from the fact that a line exists. Now, the entire week, 
we really gapped up over that line and then just sort of melted up. Now what I want to do is I want to back off and go to an hourly chart and I, I want to I want to remind you about the trading rules for an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And these are not mine. These are, are verbatim well, not verbatim, but the three trading rules for an inverted head and shoulders come from John McGee's book, uh, Edwards and McGee's, but every, most people give John McGee the credit, um, Technical Analysis of Stock Trends. And this is how it goes. Once you break out over a neckline, the trading rules are this. If, if you are not already in the stock or in the index or ETF or whatever, Wait for a pullback till either the neckline, the extended line drawn from the head to the right shoulder, or a 40% retracement from the bottom of the right shoulder to the end of the breakout move. Now at this point, we don't know where that breakout move may end. So that one really, uh, we, we, can't, we can't put any level on here currently where we say there's your 40% retracement. We can put the neckline, and there it is, and we can put the line drawn from the head through the right shoulder. We've had that, chart, that line on the chart already for a while. There it is. So both of these would indicate that if this inverted head and shoulders pattern works as they tend to do, that the, that the price of the S&P 500 should stay above this line and this line. So there's this kind of a, a hockey stick boundary going off to our right that we should stay above. Now what makes this even a little bit more interesting is the fact that a lot of people say sell in May and go away. Well if this inverted head and shoulders pattern does what it should do and if John McGee's rules for trading it hold up as they tend to do in the in the in the lion's share of cases then sell in May and go away would be a mistake in the year 2014. So let's see going forward if if these two lines do what they should do. Now I want let's uh, back up just a second. I want to take a look at a couple other things. First, here's your uh, Dow Jones Industrials. Just kind of an interesting interesting thing to note that while the uh, Dow did have an all-time high close, it's really right at about the same levels that it was in the middle of May. So the Dow needs, if it's going to show the same strength that the S&P has already shown, then the Dow needs to get on up out of here and, and start uh, challenging for uh, getting over 16 thousand eight hundred. Let's kind of keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at uh, at the Dow uh, transportation average. The Dow uh, transportation average is at an all-time high. Uh, well, I take it back. It, it lost a little ground on uh, on Friday, but just looking at the daily chart, you can see here that, uh, that it's been moving up uh, in a fairly strong move, but Interesting to note, we could be uh, coming up on some potential resistance with this extended line right here. But truth be known, let me back out on that again, make sure I got the right line. Nope, that moved kind of funny. There we go. We are coming up pretty close on potential uh, resistance in the Dow transportation average. So that's also worth keeping an eye on. Wherever we may hit this and start to back up, that may be a point at which we start to see some reverberations in the S&P. 
and maybe that's where the S&P starts its pullback. Finally, let's look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is an interesting case because it's really uh, significantly off, I mean, not a huge amount, but significantly off of its highs of early March. Um, you might see this trend line right here, and you can see that it broke um, in April, and now we appear to be in the process of back testing that, but, but you'll also see that there's some red trend lines here, and these are just represent, particularly this bottom one, simply represents a different, uh, a different look at a larger channel that could be, uh, 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 that could have developed in the NASDAQ. So it's possible that we could be hugging underneath this gray line for a while. See, this is the line that broke, but here's the line where we bounced. Additionally, if we look at the uh, look at the Nasdaq again, you can see that that all of this sorta has the look of a consolidation or a healthy pullback, and we broke out over that. Um, actually, week before last. And what we saw this week was just a gap, a gap up. Maybe that's a continuation gap. We'll see. But it looks like the uh, the Nasdaq appears to be ready um, to to maybe to mount a little run here. Now, if we come up to this gray line, we could very well see some resistance there. But I think we're getting a good bounce on this lower red line which has a little bit longer and richer history than just this gray one right here. So it's, it's certainly, it's, again, it's worth keeping an eye on. Let's see uh, if, if this plays out the way it could very well play, then we could be range bound. Well, I take it back. We could be in a new channel that would be defined by the gray line here as resistance and this red line is support. Let's see if that's the way it works out. Now let's go back to the S&P real quick. Just want to remind you, too, that if this inverted head and shoulders pattern continues to act and behave, then we have a target in the S&P measuring the depth of the head, placing this on the, on the uh, position of the breakout. We have a target now in the S&P of right at about 1990. So n finally we got something to look forward to instead of being range bound like we were for nearly, well, for actually for 13 weeks. So guys, there's your video for the week ending. Uh, what When did it end? Well, the last week of May. Let's see what, what, uh, what June 2nd brings us tomorrow. And guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support and take care.